Um, got Nina coming on here in about two seconds. I want to talk about one thing that I that, that's kind of been on my heart, and 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 from a from a business perspective or from a standpoint perspective, what I want you guys to do is I want you to think about. Um, the, the, the majority of this message is for gratitude. Okay, so there's a young man that I've been prospecting for some time now to come and join our business and our team. And he's already in insurance. And the uniqueness about it, he's with another company. He's very proud. He's very happy where he is. Well, there was a recent post he put on Instagram talking about him getting a, um, hitting the top compensation with his company. They flew him to the company's headquarters. They had him speak to the whole company. They had him talk about how his, his battle he's had over the years to build his agency up of agents to acquire and achieve the top compensation at which he's achieved. And he's a sharp young guy that I've been prospecting for him for some time. And I, I asked him, and I mean, he knows what I do. And I mean, he knows what I do. And I said, hey, man, what is your new top comp? That, you know, they put you up on stage and had you speak to the crowd and the CEO there in his fancy green suit is standing there, you know, with his big old ring and, and with the microphone in his hand. And he said, you know, what is your new, you know, and just like, you know, you've made it, right? They put him on a pedestal. He's made it. So I messaged him. I said, hey, man, congratulations on your, on your, on your promotion. He said, I said, what does that mean? He says, it means I got the top comp in the company now. I said, what is the top comp? He said, with a big smiley face, 65%. And I could, I, I don't, you know, like, it's like, <laughs> I said it, and you're right now going, what? Because that's what other companies do. They make him feel special, like he's, in, like he's a big deal. He's a, he, he is a, he's a good person, right? But they, they, they put all this flash and fans over him and fly him in a jet to the company's headquarters because he recruited a bunch of people and have him speak to all the other people who have the blinders on and don't know what's going on. And the top comp he's earned after three and a half years of tireless work with this company, 65%. What's even more sad is in the post, he said, I achieved this while still working my full-time job. He still has a full-time job, achieves the top comp in another, it's a big company, and they're putting him up on stage across the whole company because he earned his 65%. Guys and gals, what we have here is unprecedented in a business opportunity, and I do not push recruiting on you at all. We have private hiring channels, we have private hiring calls, and you'll hear about those as you progress in your business. But the fact that this still exists while Family First Life is here taking the world by storm, we are the place that people like him should be. But he feels so good from his trophy he got and his plane ride and all the accolades that the CEO let him come over to his house and he got to play pool with the CEO and he's posting about it. And I'm just like, oh my God, dude, they're just stealing from you. They're robbing you. But he won't listen to me because he's stuck in that world. So what I ask and plead of you is that if you know anyone in these companies or you, or you know anybody who's looking at these type of companies, have them look at us first, right? Have them look at us first. We have an obligation that the fact our starting comp is 90% and you, can, or, I mean, you don't have to do much to get to 100 or 110 is unprecedented in the insurance industry. So that's it. If you've never talked to anybody about this company, now would be a good time because there's people out there still being, still being hurt in public and making them say thank you for it. And that's sad. So I love FFL. I love this team. I love this company. I'm so grateful for Andrew Taylor and Sean Mike and for all the people on this chat and in this company and on our team who go out there each and every day and work hard for themselves and their families because they know and understand this is the greatest opportunity that has ever existed in business. Let's keep going. All right, without further ado, we're bringing on uh, current senior sales manager of FFL Limitless, um, future Hall of Fame producer and on track to be a vice president and future Hall of Fame producer in all of Family First Life, 
Uh, Miss Nina D is here with us to talk about sales. How are you doing, Miss Nina? I'm good, Grady. How are you? Doing very well. Happy to have you on here. You look nice. Thank you. Oh, my almost red jacket. It's coming. It's co I, you know what's funny is when I was at the store and um, we were at like, you know, Nordstrom's or something and I wanted to buy a red jacket and, I, and Chantel's like, no, you can't get one, you poser. You have to earn it. And I'm like, okay, understood. So no fake red jackets, right? So that's something that it's a coveted item in here and you're going to earn one, Julius earn one, Clay, Genevieve, lots of people are on track to earn one this year. And um, I'm excited to have you on here. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you're building like crazy. Two, you've come from an environment where you were less than appreciated as a producer and to be here at FFL and to have the compensation you have, access to leads, I know it's something you're incredibly grateful for. But at the same standpoint, you sell a lot and like crazy with a ferocious intent. And I think that's something that we could all take away from you as producers, as people, as men and women who have ambition is that a lot of times people come to us at FFL and they're like, I see it, you're excited, you get it, you're, you know, it's a business, I'm excited about it. But like, I don't know, like I've never been coached or taught or never, you know, maybe I grew up with deadbeat parents or maybe my, you know, grew up in an environment where I, would, where I wasn't around positive people and people come into our world and they're like, hold on, so you guys are super positive, you work really hard, you care about each other and you make a lot of money okay, I never want to leave this, right? So I think that's something for you that maybe you can kind of um, just, you know, just, you know, we're going to get into sales, but share with everybody, um, you know, a little bit about who you are real quick. And then I'd love to jump into some sales stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you having me on. First thing, before I get into anything, we are in the new office. Do you see everyone? Oh yeah. How good is that? New office. A lot of us are here. We are loving it. I mean, awesome. this is going to 10x. So we're super fired up. But again, I appreciate you having me on. Well, I know a lot of people already know kind of my background, but I'll kind of get into it because yeah. there are a lot of new people. So um, basically, I went to school, I went to college, and I got I majored in dietetics and nutrition. Growing up, I wanted to be a personal trainer, I wanted to be a dietitian, and then I actually did it and realized that they make no money. <laughs> So um, I was a personal trainer for a while, and then um, someone had introduced me to the insurance industry. I saw a bunch of people making a lot of money. I was like, okay, I'm going to get my license. Took me a while to pass my test, but I finally did. And then um, I finally started with another company. When I started there, I was at 40% comp, and it wasn't like we did advanced nine months here. It was 40% of 65%, which is like six months, <laughs> which is horrible. So I was basically sold on this dream of like, okay, work here for 10 years and then your renewals are going to take care of you for the rest of your life. Well, that wasn't the case. So I was there for a few years. Ashley, Jordan, and I, a few others come from the same company and it was great from a training standpoint. And I'm very glad I was with that company because it led me to family first life. And it makes me that much more grateful for what we have here. So, um, Fast forward, I was there for a few years. Um, Jordan, I knew a few people that had switched over, made the switch, and I was kind of hesitant because I was doing pretty well over there, and I heard, you know, good, bad things, whatever, and then I asked Jordan if I could do a ride along with him, so I went on a ride along with him. I wasn't even, you know, thinking of kind of making the switch. It was just kind of like, let's, let's do it. If it's good, then I'll switch. If not, we'll see what happens. Well, First appointment we go to, stinkiest house of all time. Like I've never, I, I was like, what is this, Jordan? Are all your appointments like this? He sells it. And then we go to the next appointment and then he sells it. Um, from there, I kind of made the switch. So I started back in August of last year. August 8th was my one year anniversary of writing my first policy with FFL. And this year has completely changed my life. Like I... I don't know. I just feel like a completely different person. I'm so happy with my life. I have more money in my bank account than, you know, I even thought was possible at my age. I mean, I'm 25 years old and I mean, I'm able to help a lot of people serve a lot of families and also help my agents do the same thing. So very, very grateful for this opportunity. I will never go anywhere else. This is the best business ever, as we always say. So right. yeah, I love it. 
tremendous, tremendous story, similar to other people. Maybe they've been in other industries. Maybe they've been at jobs where they just didn't feel um, like it was for them. And that's the big thing is that if you're out here watching us and you're not in the first column, you're not in the top 50, you didn't make money last month, is to look in yourself and to look at what other people are doing. And it's all they're doing is taking advantage of a great opportunity. It's not like we're out here going, you know, this is, you know, come on here, buy your leads 30%. It's like, come on, buy your leads 90%, right? And we're, we're helping people put themselves in a good position. It's just a lot of self-reflection of, is there ambition within you that wants you to push through what you're currently going through? And so it's and great to see you found your home with us. And that's the thing is like, I started with FFO. I wanted to be full time. I got free leads on my last company. So spending money on leads was kind of scary to me at first. So I was the person that came in and spent $500 on leads, 20, it was like 20, 25 brand new final expense leads. Didn't even consider the CRM or anything, just bought 20 leads. And I dialed on those leads for like three weeks. I was trying to milk everything that I possibly could. Like I was so anti spending money on leads and I was, I was, I thought I was full time, but I was part time basically from August to, till we went to that conference in November. And that's what changed the game for me. I mean, I'm sitting there lit, like my jaw dropped listening, listening to these people on stage. Like, how is this even possible? Like if this guy can do it, I can do it. So after that conference in November, I remember we had like a little bet going on. It was like, if I write this much, you're going to buy me this or something like that. <laughs> so that's when I was like, yep, like this is it. I'm going all in. Like it's, I'm either going to go all in and do really well, or I'm going to go all in and fail. And then, you know, I can always do something else. I would agree to fall back on. So I went all in and I have not looked back ever since. I would, it's phenomenal. So you are, um, one of our top producers on the whole team. And this is kind of where we'll transition to what I'd like to, you know, really pull out of you today is, you know, dialing's great. We know it's 80% of the business. If you're not going to dial, then what Nina's going to teach you right now is going to serve you no value. If you haven't bought leads, this is going to serve you no value. You know, I, I've learned from many mentors, learn where you want to be. So it's important for you to be here. But like the, what you sure you're going to hear from Nina right now is a sales training on how to go out and, and, uh, and eliminate objections <clears throat> and sell a lot of insurance and protect families and put money in your, your family's bank account. But there's, there's things that come before this, which is, you know, asserting, I'm going to do this. I'm going to dial until the job gets done. I'm going to push through when it gets hard, because if all these people are having success, I know I can do it too, because they're just like me, humans, right? They're just humans, right? This is, <laughs> you're not a cheetah. I'm not a giraffe, right? We can, we can do this. So, <clears throat> so there we go. So what we want to do is Nina's going to talk about sales and I'm going to, I'm going to zip it up and let Nina flow because she is one of the most elite sales producers we have. And she's going to teach you how to do the same. So without the floor is yours, miss. Awesome. Well, Grady, I, you are going to be my client today. Okay. Perfect. You are great. Just requested some final expense insurance through Facebook. Your favorite hobby is whatever. I already booked you, okay? I'm coming to your right. house and we are doing this. We're getting your stuff taken care of. So I'm going to go through what I say in the home and then why I say certain things. So I'm going to pause and then explain Perfect. why. Excellent. So, Hello? Hi, Grady. We're not on the phone. Hi, Grady. Uh, my name's Nina. I'm here for our appointment about the funeral and final expense insurance. How are you? I'm well. Awesome. Do you have a table that we can sit at? I do. Right through the living room. Perfect. Perfect. So as I'm walking through the home um, to get to the table, I'm building a little bit of rapport. I'm not big on rapport. I'm very direct. I'm very in control. My biggest thing is just we're, we're here to get the job done. Uh, if you have eight to 10 appointments a day, you don't have time to be spending you know, 20 minutes building rapport with someone. So um, I'll build rapport as I'm walking in. Oh, are you from here, Grady? Uh, yeah. You are? Okay. Awesome. Do you have any kids? Four. Four of them. Okay. Are they all local or are they, are they, uh, are they, yeah. you're seven, they're all local? I'm 70 in this scenario. Sarah, yeah. you're two, two, two of them live in California, one in Colorado and one is local. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So Grady, so basically the reason I'm here, you filled out some information on social media about uh, getting some funeral and final expense coverage in place. What was the reasoning behind that, um, that request? What pushed you to fill that form out? Um, 
Um, well, I just want to know what it, what it costs. And, you know, I kind of don't want to leave any, any expenses to my kids. Okay. So you don't want to burden your family with that expense? No, no, I don't. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's what most people say. So first things first, I'm going to go through exactly who I am and what I do. So I always, I bring this binder in the home. I bring a briefcase with folders, with, you know, brochures, stuff like that. And my binder and my iPad are in there. So I'll bring this out and I have my state license in the back. And then I have this sheet in the front. So um, my thing is I'll go, I, I'm going to go through exactly who I am and what I do. So Again, my name is Nina. This right here is my Arizona state insurance license. I'm licensed by this state to go over this with you. So if you want to go ahead and take a picture of this, feel free. Otherwise, you can call the Department of Insurance and verify that I am who I say I am. I want them to have that trust from the beginning. And then I flip it over and I say, okay, and the company that I work for and represent is called Family First Life. I'm a broker, Grady. I'm not a captive agent. I don't just work for one company. I don't give one quote because insurance isn't a one size fits all type deal. I'm a broker, so I have access to about 15 different companies. They're all A and A plus rated, meaning A, I can find you the best quote, best price, and B, all of these companies are very financially backed, so you never have to worry about them going out of business, okay? So a lot of what we do as a company is mortgage protection insurance. We also focus on life insurance, and we specialize in safe money retirement. We're focusing on life insurance for funeral and final expenses for you today, okay? Is that fair? Sounds good. Okay. Perfect. So Grady, I'm going to take about two minutes to just ask you some basic questions, both finance and medical questions, just to see what you'd be able to qualify for. And then this, basically I have everything in my binder. So I have these little flaps where I have all my credibility sheets. I have a bunch of in-home help stuff. So like prescription checks and like the final expense cheat sheet. I have that. That way, if I'm stuck, I could just look at that. So I like to have that stuff in front of me. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, I'll get this sheet out, the inventory sheet. And I think I saw this in like an Andrew Taylor video where he basically said, when you go to the doctor, they ask you all these questions. They ask, what's your you know, family health history? What's this? What's your height, weight, yada, yada, yada. We want to make sure that there's not an empty space on this inventory sheet. We want to fill absolutely everything out. That way we can find out everything about the client so we can put them in the right place. So I whip this out and then at the top of this, it says there's three objectives. We want to make sure we find you something that's affordable, comfortable, and something you can qualify for. So after I go through the credibility sheet and say I'm going to ask you about two minutes of this and this, um, we have three main objectives today. We want to make sure today, Grady, that we find you something that's affordable, something that the coverage is comfortable, and something that you actually qualify for based on your age, health, and habits, okay? Does that sound fair? Sounds good. Perfect. Awesome, Grady. And I always start with medical questions first. I kind of loosen them up to then get to the uh, finance questions. So, Grady, what is your age? 70. 70. Okay. When do you turn 71? December. Okay. Alrighty. And then you're retired or are you still working? I'm retired. Awesome. What did you do in your working years? Worked on the railroad. Oh, awesome. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> and then uh, are you a smoker or non-smoker? Non-smoker. Perfect. And then what, uh, I, they already usually have their medications out due to, you know, me booking them on the phone. And then do you have those medications that I asked you to grab for me? Perfect. Awesome. And Grady, what medications are you taking? Um, I'm taking an insulin. I'm taking metrobolol for my high blood pressure and simvastatin for my cholesterol. Perfect. And then I'm eprazole for my acid reflux. <laughs> You got it. <laughs> and then anything else that you can think of that you've been prescribed within the last two years? Um, they've had me on a different heart medication two years ago, but other than that, that's all. What was that heart medication rating? Um, Lysinopril. Okay. 
Awesome. And then any major surgeries for you in the last couple of years? Um, nothing, nothing really. Just like a little minor back surgery. Nothing really. Okay. Were you on pain medication for that? I was. Okay. What was that medication? Uh, it was like Percocet. Okay. You're no longer on that, correct? No, it's been about four or five years since I took that. Was it a low dosage? Yeah, it was small. I'm pretty tough. Okay. And Grady, tell me a little bit about your family health history. Any cancer, heart disease, anything um, like that? Here? Um, no, my family's pretty healthy. They're pretty healthy. They're okay. good. They're good? Nothing on mom no. or dad's side? No, they're good. Okay. They're, they're good. Okay, Grady. So now I'm going to ask you some preliminary health questions. Just answer yes or no to these. This will kind of guide me on what company you'd be able to qualify for, okay? Uh, any heart attack for you? About seven years ago. Seven years ago? Yeah. Okay. All righty. I'm glad you're okay. Um, any strokes? No. CIA cancer? No. Any heart stents? No. None? Okay. Any uh, diet? You said you're on insulin. Uh, do you have diabetic neuropathy by chance? No. No. Okay. Perfect. Uh, any high blood pressure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, lupus, asthma, or COPD? Okay, thyroid issues? Nope. Anxiety, depression, or kidney or, li kidney or liver disease? None. Okay, perfect. And then, Grady, what about is your monthly income? Uh, 3200 3200 Is that Social Security pension? What's that coming from? Social Security and the railroad pension. Okay, perfect. Reunion? Um, I don't, yes. I don't. Cool. I would just add to us. <laughs> Some rapport during the, during the presentation. Yeah. Awesome, Grady. And then, are you renting or do you own this home? I own it. You own it, okay. And then, is it paid off, or are you still paying paying the mortgage? Uh, we bought about eleven years ago, so okay. it's not eleven years. Well, did you get a fifteen, twenty, or thirty year? Thirty. Thirty, perfect. So you have about nineteen years left. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And then, how much do you owe on the home? One hundred and thirty. Hundred and thirty thousand. Perfect. And then uh, you said you purchased it about eleven years ago. What's the value of your home today? Probably two hundred. Two hundred thousand. So you already have set about around seventy thousand of equity in the home. Good for you. Perfect. And then uh, what's your monthly payment? Uh, monthly payment is about twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Yep. Perfect. And then do you pay extra towards the mortgage to pay that loan off early? Mm hmm. Sometimes, you know, the kids are going to get anyway, so I'm not going to pay too much down. I'd rather have more of my money. Perfect. Uh, how much more about do you add? I, no, I don't add any. Oh, you don't add. Okay, perfect. And then, uh, Grady, uh, what do you have in place that acts like life insurance, or what do you have to offset the cost of the mortgage when something happens to you? Do you have any 401ks, IRAs, stocks, funds, mutual funds, anything set up? Um, I have an old IRA from a job I had way back when. It's got about 110,000 in it. Is that relative to this? 110,000. Grady, it's just a question that we asked just to see what you'd be able to qualify for and you know offset it to what you already have in place, okay? Um, do you have any life insurance in place? Um, I have a, yeah, I have a, a $10,000 policy from AAA. Okay, and then is this $10,000 policy from AAA a term or whole life? Uh, it's, it's whole life. Whole life. Okay. Perfect. When did you get it? About a year ago. A year ago. Okay. And what's your monthly payment on the policy? Mm, $72. $72 a month. Okay. And then uh, for your beneficiary on this policy, who is it? Is it your children? Uh, it's my daughter. Okay. What's your daughter's name? Uh, Presley. Presley. Okay. So I assume for this funeral and final expense insurance, uh, Presley is going to be the one in charge of taking care of that, yeah. yes? Yeah, she's the most responsible. Awesome, good. Yeah, usually uh, you have that one that's the most responsible, right? Yeah. Um, okay, do you have identity theft protection in place? No. No? What's that? You don't have a lock or anything like that? No, I don't. Okay, I'll get to that later on. All our, our products actually include identity theft protection. Um, do you have a will in 
No, I don't. Just, you know, Presley's on that AAA policy. That's about it right now. Okay, Grady, with your age, it's very important that you do get something like a will or a trust in place. I'm actually going to give you a free website that you can go to. It's called doyourownwill.com. You can go up there and write your will in there for free, okay? Oh, thank you. And I'll make sure you remind me to give you that before I leave, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So, Grady, based off of everything you told me, I know what company you'll be able to qualify for, but I do have a few questions for you before we get into qualification. Um, is this coverage going to be there in place to just cover funeral and final expenses, or did you want to leave a, leave a little bit more in place for Presley? Um, I mean, I like to leave as much as I can, but, you know, I, you know, I don't want to spend too much because, you know, they're going to get the house, right? So they're going to get some money from that, but I, you know, just kind of depends on price. Okay. Okay. Grady. And then do you want to be cremated or buried? Buried. Buried. Okay. Are you familiar with the cost of burial today? Uh, no, I'm not actually, no. No, you haven't had any friends recently pass away or anyone you know pass away. So you're not too familiar with the cost. On average, what do you think it costs to be buried today? Seven grand? I don't know. 9,000? The national average for burial today is right around 10,000. Okay. Maybe 10 years ago, it was around 7,000. But with inflation, it's caused everything to increase. And it's going to increase more and more down the line. Um, so you want to be buried. So today, burial is anywhere from about ten to 15,000. So I always say, pause from the, we're not in home right now. So the reason, there's a lot of agents that'll go into a home and they'll basically go through the inventory sheet and then, then they'll go, okay, how much coverage are you looking for? Well, then that puts the client in control. So you no longer have the control. Well, the ball's in their court. Now they're going to tell you, oh, 5,000, when you could have really gotten them protected on more. Like, what's 5,000 really going to do? So they may have heard that their friend died 10 years ago and got buried or cremated for 1,000 bucks, so that's what they're looking for. Well, that's not the case today. So you have to be very knowledgeable in, like, our industry. So we're in the final expense industry, so you should know the cost of a cremation, the cost of a burial, what VA covers, what they don't cover, um, what the cost is at like a local funeral home. So really educate yourself on that because I feel like that's what's helped me. So um, I'll ask the question. So are you looking to be cremated or buried? You said burial. So today burials anywhere from 10 to 15,000. I'll give you a little backstory. My grandparents passed away about two years ago. I'm originally from Serbia. So they wanted to be buried over there, which is crazy. I know the cost of both of their burials combined was 47,000 to get them shipped over there. So I kind of paint the picture of like what it could be, especially if they're looking to be, you know, like you said, your, your daughter was in California. Are you looking to be buried here or there? So you want to add those little things. If so I I'll, said, if I said cremate, do the, cre talk, teach real quick about cremation and VA. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'll say is I, I know the numbers in my head. If they tell me they want cremation, I know I'm getting them coverage anywhere between five to 10,000 or more if they're looking to, you know, add, leave more for a child or a beneficiary or whatever the case may be. If they're looking to be buried, I'll show them usually, I mean, 15 to 25, maybe 30. So it just depends on the case, but you want to know that. So as soon as they tell you, oh, cremation, okay, you have the numbers in your head. You're not going to let them tell you, oh, it's 1500 bucks because it really isn't. It really isn't. So um, you're gonna say, I'm going to say, okay, uh, Grady, so you want burial. So the cost of burial today is anywhere from about ten to 25000 depending on what exactly you want. So you said you just want to cover burial again. You don't, you don't want to leave money for price. No, we can leave some, you know, it depends on price. Can you, you know, what's, show me the minimum and show me a little bit more. Got it, Grady. So this is all based on what you can qualify for with your medications. I'm not exactly sure, um, but we'll fill out an application for coverage and we'll see what you qualify for. But let me pull up some uh, rates and quotes for you here. That way we can find what best suits you. Okay. So then um, I kind of lose, I'll try to like build rapport as I'm getting the quotes. So I'll pull out my iPad or whatever it is. And I get a blank sheet of paper. So usually on the back of this and I'll put bronze, I'll put silver, and I'll put gold. So 
So I know a lot of people do the two, five, seven percent. I'm not good at math, so I am not going to do that. <laughs> so um, the number one, can you see, you can see me, right? Did it disconnect? Okay. So um, bronze, silver, gold. So you said that you want burial, but you want to leave extra. So I'm going to show you as much coverage as possible. So my bronze program is going to be 20,000. So I'm thinking AmeriPro for this, this client. That's what you guys are thinking, yeah? Okay. So I know because I have my final expense cheat sheet in front of me. If I'm stuck, I can look at it or I can call someone in the home. Usually I recommend calling in the home if you're new. Um, but since I've you know been through so many appointments, I kind of know what it would be that they would qualify for. So bronze is 20,000. Silver is 25,000. And gold is 30,000. And then I'll just put the prices next to it. Okay. So let's say bronze is 100, silver is 150, and gold is 200. So Brady, I went ahead and pulled up some quotes for you. Again, like I said at the very beginning of the, this appointment or this meeting, I wanna make sure that we find something that's both affordable, comfortable, and something you can qualify for, okay? so. I went ahead and pulled up a few quotes for you. So I have bronze, silver, gold. Um, the bronze program, $20,000, $100 a month. Silver, $25,000, $150 a month. And gold, $30,200 a month. Of these three, which amount do you wanna leave for Presley to take care of your funeral and final expenses? Um, the 25,000 I could probably do. The silver pr uh, program for 25000 Yeah. Okay. Is this $150 a month comfortable for you on good days, bad days, bad months, good months? I want to make sure that you keep this coverage, okay? Is this comfortable yeah. for you? I can do that. Okay. okay, perfect. So, Brady, the next step is basically for me to see if you can actually qualify for this coverage. I wish I could approve everyone myself. However, it's AmeriCo's decision to. The company that we are applying with is AmeriCo. Have you heard of them before? I haven't, no. Okay. I'm gonna give you this uh, credibility sheet that you can look at. This kind of goes through more detail about the company. Um, aside from that, I'll tell you a little bit about AmeriCo. I actually have my personal coverage through them. I'll show them my policy. So I'll whip out my policy and show them um, just briefly. And then AmeriCo's uh, been around since 1906. Um, they're a huge company. They're actually privately held. So that's why you probably don't hear of them too much, but I have my personal coverage to them. So that way, you know, you can trust them. So then I will uh, say, okay, next step is, you know, to see if you can actually qualify, go ahead and grab me your ID and a blank check and we'll go from there. Okay. And then a I know you say the glass of water. I don't do that. But <laughs> you know, if it works for you, you don't need the, you don't need the tricks. Um, exactly. I mean, yeah, and then if they, another thing that I'll add, so like, let's say you gave me a rebuttal and said, oh no, like I'm gonna go check with the funeral home or whatever. I'll sit there and I'll say, okay, Grady, so um, are you familiar with the three ways to pay for a funeral? And how, are you familiar, no. Grady? No. No, okay, no. so there's three ways to pay for a funeral today. I'm gonna go through all three with you. So the first way is gonna be cash all up front. So do your kids, have 15 to 25,000 lying around to cover a funeral that wouldn't burden, put a burden on them? No. The first way is cash all up front. And that's, what, that's why you see, you know, the GoFundMe's, car washes, stuff like that, because people can't really afford a funeral anymore. And it's only going up in price. The second way is prepaid burial. So with a prepaid burial, you go into your local funeral home, you tell the funeral director, hey, I would like to prepay into my burial. It's going to cost you anywhere from 300 to $400 a month. Say something happens to you outside of the state or you're gone somewhere, it's not going to be covered. Or say you pay one premium into it and something happens to you tomorrow, well, your family still has to cover the rest. So that's out of the picture. And then the third way is funeral and final expense insurance, which is what you requested. This is the most affordable way to get your funeral and final expenses taken care of. And if you qualify, it's gonna give you immediate coverage. So if you paid two, three, four premiums and something happened to you after that, well, your family's gonna get that full 25,000 upfront and they never have to pay another penny into the policy again. Does that make sense? Oh, that's pretty cool. 
that's what I would say if like someone rebuttaled me or um, they were like, oh, well, I'm just going to go check with the funeral home or I'm going to have, you know, my daughter take care of this or oh, whatever it is. I like to add that in there because it's a no brainer, right? Like what else, why would you go and pay three to 400 bucks a month when you can spend 150 and have it all taken care of? And usually those, if you go to like a funeral home, usually it's like a, they have their own um, products, but they're usually like graded products, which is annoying. So um, yeah, so then from there, I will um, fill out the application for them. They get approved, awesome. I'll let them know within, you know, a few days. How do you tie that at the end? At the end, so how are you tying it down? So it goes through, it says approved. They don't know it's approved yet. What do you do right then and there? Do you tell them in the home? Do you wait? What is your, what is your process? So to be honest, I tell them in the home. Reason okay. being, I know, I know a lot of people do it differently. I'm just being honest here. So I no, tell them- It's clearly working for you. So don't, don't. And I've always done that. I've always told them in the home, um, just due to the fact that it ties it down right there and then. The company that I used to work with, like we would submit the coverage and then they could either get approved or decline like four weeks later. And I don't want to put someone in that situation. And it's also giving them more time to kind of shop around. So I know like I tied it down very well. They trust me, this and that, but like, you never know, like you can't trust a client to not go to like another company or have like another broker come out or research stuff online. Like if I'm not telling them there and then it gives me like anxiety because I'm like, what if the time I call them and let them know like, Hey, you're approved. Congratulations. What if they cancel? So I like to tell them there and then I know you guys can do whatever you want. Of course. I know that. Okay. So say it's a company that doesn't tell you right there and then how, how are we, I want, I want you to close out the appointment. Then I want to pivot back to mortgage. Absolutely. So, um, basically, um, we're going to submit this request for coverage. Unfortunately, I won't know right away if you've been approved or not. We're going to submit this request in the next few days when they let me know if you've been approved or not, I'll go ahead and give you a call and let you know. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So and that, that's okay. Handshake, brochure, folder. I look, you know, I'll let you know. My assistant's going to call you and just kind of direct. Yeah. yeah. So what I like to do is I leave them with a folder. I write everything down up here. So on this, I will circle America. I'll write down 25,000. I'll write your first and last name. I'll uh, write the policy number on there. I'll write everything on this form. I'll put it in a folder with a brochure. Before I leave, I like to let them know, okay, Grady, I'm I'm super happy I was able to take care of you today. I just want you to know one thing. I'm not only here for you when something happens, okay? I'm here for you while you're living. So God forbid, you know, times got tough and you need to decrease your coverage or increase or whatever the case may be, I'll be your go-to. I'm your agent for life. So no matter what, who are you going to call? Me. You. Exactly. Perfect. So and then I just leave them with everything and that's pretty much it. That was excellent. A lot of, lot of fantastic tips that people haven't heard before that they can immediately go out and implement tomorrow. So thank you. There is a lot of people that do also sell mortgage and I know you sell a lot of mortgage protection leads as well. So um, financial inventory is probably fairly similar, you know, mortgage, et cetera. But let's talk about how, you know, saying that I'm 45, I make yep. 5,000, I'm married with kids, wife doesn't work, okay? Can you, can you kind of talk through like a quote presentation setup, you know, however you would like Give us that if you could. Absolutely. I would be more than happy to. I like to do both. I like mortgage protection and final expense. I think final expense is great because it's a really, really quick appointment. You're in and out in like 30, 45 minutes. Whereas mortgage is a little bit lengthier because usually it's like a husband and wife and they're looking for more coverage and you know, it's just, it's just a little lengthier, but I love to do both. And Ever since I've been, you know, doing both of them, that's been my biggest months. So um, basically, same thing. I go and I have my binder. I go through who I am and what I do. The only different thing that I do in the very beginning is um, this right here. When I say, okay, a lot of what we do is mortgage protection. We do some life insurance and we specialize in safe money retirement, like annuities. I say, Mary or John. Grady, sorry, Mary and John. Um, do you know the difference or do you know the major difference between mortgage protection insurance and life insurance? I don't. No? Okay. No. I'll, I'll, so basically life insurance is only going to pay out when you die. So you have to pass away in order for the life insurance to pay out. 
Mortgage protection has living benefits. Do you know what living benefits are? I don't know. So basically, if you become terminally, chronically, or critically ill, so like a heart attack, stroke, cancer, or at death, this would actually have 100% living benefits. So it would pay out that full benefit and it would pay off your mortgage, okay? So if I get sick, it'll I can take the money out of a, of a mortgage protection policy to help with my mortgage? Correct, exactly. So if you wow. become chronically or critically ill, this will be in place to cover your mortgage. What, what, is, what is a terminal or chronic? I mean, is that like a heart attack or stroke? Terminal okay. Cancer. So if you were told that you had that illness, this would be in place to cover your mortgage. Grady, wow. you're, you're 45 years old. If something like that happened to you, you probably wouldn't work anymore, correct? I, if you got a terminal illness, you probably could no yeah, longer work. I'm probably, yeah. Okay, then where is your income coming from? This is going to ensure that you have income in place to pay off your mortgage, okay? Okay. So I'll just bring out another one of these and I'll go through the financial inventory sheet. However, instead of asking those health questions first, I'm going through finance questions first. So um, again, you're Grady, you're 45 years old, you're requesting mortgage protection. So um, Grady, what do you owe on your home? Good. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> uh, um, what about my home? Uh, I owe two hundred and seventy thousand. Two hundred and seventy thousand. Okay, perfect. Is that a fifteen, twenty, or thirty year? Thirty year. Thirty year. Okay. Did you just uh, purchase it? I did. Perfect. Okay. And then, what's the value of your home? A two ninety. 290 okay twenty thousand dollars of equity not bad and then uh what's your monthly payment seventeen hundred seventeen hundred perfect and then uh do you plan or pay or plan on plan pay or plan on paying extra towards the mortgage to pay the loan off early uh i plan on but not i you know we're just getting settled in right now i can't even you know you see the boxes i don't even have the boxes unpacked yet okay perfect and then Grady, what do you do for work? Work at the railroad. Okay, perfect. What do you do there? Um, I work in the office, you know, making sure it's clerical, you know, office stuff. Perfect. And what about is your monthly income? About 4,900. 4,900, so you're doing well. Perfect. And then uh, Grady, are you a smoker or non-smoker? No, no, I don't smoke, no. Perfect. Are you currently taking any medications? Um, nope. Okay. You're doing great. Usually I get a list of them. Um, and, and any major surgeries the last two years? Uh, no, no, I'm good. And then, uh, what's your family health history like? Parents still, still kicking? They're good. I mean, they're fine. They're good. Perfect. No cancer, heart disease, anything like that. Okay. And then I'll go through those same questions, the heart attack, stroke, cancer, all of that. And then uh, Grady, what do you have to offset the cost of this mortgage when you die or if something happens to you? Do you have any 401ks, IRAs, stocks, bonds, or mutual funds? Um, I've been starting to contribute to the 401k. I had to pull some money out for the down payment. So about, you know, 30,000 or so in there right now. Okay. Perfect. And then 30,000 in the 401k. And then do you currently have any life insurance? Yeah, through work, I do. Okay. Do you have any life insurance outside of work? Um, just, no, but I, I got the work coverage. Just the work coverage, okay. Yeah. Do you know how work? Um, I mean, I, you know, like it's supposed to work, right? Like, you know, if I, something happens well, to me, pay my wife. It works while you're working. So if you pass away while you're working, it'll pay out. But just like a company car, once you leave, quit, or retire, that work coverage is unfortunately going to go away within 31 days. Has anyone ever told you that? I know. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's it's not portable. So uh, you said you have, you, how much did you, coverage did you say you had through work? 200. 200,000. Okay, perfect. And then who's your beneficiary on that policy? My wife. And your wife's name is Chantel? Correct. 
Perfect. And then Grady, do you have identity theft protection or do you have a will in place? Uh, no, no, I'm both. So I'll, I'll make sure I go through and fill everything out. A major difference is just that I go through those finance questions first. And then basically I'll whip this out and I'll say, okay, awesome, Grady. So since you're really healthy, you're making my job really easy. So this is gonna be awesome for you. So the company that we do all of our mortgage protection insurance through is called Americo. Have you heard of them before? I haven't, no. 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 And the same thing, I'll give them the, you know, strength and stability form um, and I'll kind of go through, they've been around since 1906, yada, yada. So the reason we're going through Americo is because they're the only company out there that gives 100% living benefits. So I can put you with another company, but this is the only company that's going to give you 100% living benefits. So that's it's going to probably- get sick, if, if I get sick, it'll, it'll help out? Any terminal, chronic, or critical illness that'll help out with, okay? okay? So, Brady, so there's three different ways we could protect your mortgage today. I'm gonna go through all three of them with you and you kind of pick which one work, would work best, okay? So um, the first way is gonna be through traditional mortgage protection insurance. So what that is, um, it's gonna cover you only, it's only gonna cover your mortgage in the event of an accidental death. So that's what the lenders used to offer. Only accidental, you die in an accident, it'll cover your mortgage, okay? The second way through HMS, which stands for Home Mortgage Series Term Insurance, basically it's going to cover you for the duration of your loan. If you pass away within those 30 years of your loan, it'll pay out. If you get ill within those 30 years, it'll pay out. However, if you outlive that policy, if none of that happens to you, it's going to go away after 30 years and you put all this money into it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the third way is very similar to the second way. However, instead of losing your coverage, if you don't use it, so if you don't pass away or don't get ill, you actually get every single penny that you've put into your policy back tax free. So of those three options, which one sounds best to you? Um, I mean, are they all the same? They're all, they're all the same price? Brady, no. So um, it, I went in order from the cheapest coverage to the uh, most ex expensive coverage. All of them are going to protect your mortgage. It just depends on what's important to you. Do you want to ensure that your mortgage is protected only for accidental death or do you like those living benefits? And um, I like living benefits. Can you show me the last two? What the difference is if the money back, not money back? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So then I, that's basically my mortgage protection in home. They usually, I like 100% of the time, they pick the third option, which is the CBO. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they'll pick the second option. Usually they'll say that when they're like, oh, well, I don't want another investment. I don't really care about the cash back. I, they just want the living benefits during the policy. So then I'll basically draw like a little T-chart and then I'll put term and then CBO. And then I always like to show 100% of the loan 75% of the loan and 50% of the loan. And then from there, they get how to- say, How do you say that? Do you just say, Grady, I'm gonna show you, I just wanna show you, you know, this will pay off. Tell, yeah. tell us how you, those are, these are the magic words, so. So what I like to say is, Grady, a lot, what a lot of people will do is they'll actually get not, they don't wanna cover their full mortgage because they realize they're paying their mortgage down. So what they'll do is at least get half or 75% 70 of the mortgage covered. That way they have something in place. So that's how I do that. Okay. So you show me the numbers, then you, then you close, give me the close again. Yeah. So I'll write all the numbers down. I'll say this, cost this, yada, yada, yada. And then, um, okay, Grady. So these are the options I've come up with for you. All of these are gonna ensure that your mortgage is covered, okay? And not only that, you have the living benefits with both of these policies as well. So we have the term options and the term with cash back options. Out of these options, which one works best for you or what amount would you like to leave your wife if something were to happen to you? And then- The middle so, one. Um, always pick the middle one, right? Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Wow, that was, um... That was very good. Any final things within regards to mortgage or little things you do in there that were helpful? 
I mean, that, I mean, that's really it. Like you just paint the picture for them, let them know the difference. They basically, I feel like one of the biggest things they say is, um, okay, so this is like life insurance. Well, no, it's not. It has living benefits. So I really like put the pressure on the living benefits, especially if they're young. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it, they requested, before. they literally physically filled out that form, sent it back to our office. We can almost always get them something whether it's accidental, like, let's say they have a lot of coverage. Okay. Well, you don't have accidental or, you know, just add on little things. But I feel like, I mean, I keep things simple and I'm very direct with them. I don't spend too much time talking. I'm just spending time like educating them on like why they need the coverage. So. Awesome. You know, that's very, very, very good. Um, very direct, very focused. And you can see her, her position. A lot of things are very similar. She's showing three quotes. She's talking about the benefits of the product. She's showing you the numbers, which one is, mo which one do you want to leave to Presley? How much money do you want to leave to Chantel? Oof, oof. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, yeah. oh, I didn't think of it like that, you know? That's good. That's good. So yeah. um, any final thoughts, everybody? It just, you know, if, uh, if this was excellent, everyone, please in the audience, give her a big round of applause, hoot and holler. Julius. <laughs> Um, awesome. So any, so to close this and we'll close this out now and, and I'd love for you to kind of just, you know, if all these 170 people were direct agents to you, what would be some final advice you would give to them as far as this business, how this goes? Don't be fearful, go all in. I mean, this company has absolutely changed my life. And like I said, I'm never going anywhere else and buy all the leads. Like, get everything it was just more leads. I locked stuff down from, you know, mortgage protection to final expense mailers to leads in Hawaii to leads in Florida. Like I'm willing to go anywhere and do anything to make this work. And if you're really serious about this, you'll do the same because it's going to take, put you to the next level. So. Thank you, Nina. Great job today. Thank you. Thank All you right, buddy. Hey, you got it. Thank you. Everyone have a, uh, make this a great dial day. Make this a great week. Everyone in the first column this is something that I didn't even touch on. And Nina, and why did, uh, let's, let's, I'll let you close with this. Everyone in the first column works on the weekend. Why? Clients are home. Clients are happy. Clients just got paid Friday. So it's not a big deal to start a policy on Saturday when they know they got money in the bank account. Anything you can do to put the odds in your favor that the stressors of them making a decision is to your benefit you should utilize as a business, as a business person. And Nina, any, any, any final quick tips on working the weekends? Work the weekends, it'll change. It'll 10X your bank account. Like you say, we work the weekdays to pay our bills. We work the weekends to build a legacy. So that's, right. that's what we do. All right, guys. Awesome. Looks Thank you, Nina. Everybody make it a great day. Um, we'll see you on the next call. Bye for now.